Once again, welcome to another beautiful, wonderful live broadcast. This is the voice of Isaiah Phillips Akintola greeting you this morning and of course wishing you a wonderful and a blessed morning. If you can join us this morning, I will appreciate that we spend a few minutes, few time in the presence of God as you get ready to go to your various working place, to your various business. This is my own business. This is the business heaven has committed into my hands to prepare you to start your day, to help you begin your journey in the path of righteousness. So join me this morning, wherever you are, wherever you are able to connect from this morning. It will be a great privilege and an honor to share this moment with you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your mercy, your love, and your goodness once again that has awoken us into the land of the living. Thank you for your beauty, O oh God, that is ever shining through your presence, O oh God, into our heart, into our soul. We thank you once again that we are alive this morning to praise you, to honor you, to glorify you, to exalt you, to extol you, to glorify you, Lord, to proclaim and to declare who you are, to make your glory known, to make your fame known, O God. We honor you this morning as we begin this day. We offer our lives, we offer the day into your hands. We commit every moment of this day into your hands. We lay them down this day on your very altar. We pray this morning that our life becomes that sweet smelling aroma rising up to you, O God. Yes, Father, we offer to you this moment. We offer to you this hour. As we continue to wait and listen to your voice, the directions of your intentions for our life for this brand new day, this new season that you have ushered us into. We pray, Father, for the spirit of continuity, the spirit of faithfulness. You are the faithful one. The scripture says a name was given to you. It's called faithful. Father, we thank you this morning that in faithfulness, we will receive in the name of Jesus, the direction of your son. Christ will be ministered to us in a new way. We'll have a deeper and a better understanding of the revelation of Christ. His will, his counsel, his truth will find a rest, a place of expression in everything that we think and we do. We bless you, Lord, this morning for Christ's sake. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you take us deeper. You bring us closer to the eternal life. Yes, that has been given to us as our inheritance. And that life will flow out of us as a river, O oh God, glorifying your name and exalting your presence in the earth. Hallelujah. Welcome. If you're joining us this morning, well, just want to take time to pray with you this morning. And of course, share one or two scriptures uh, with, with you. Of course, our prayer is always based on the word of God, on that which the spirit of God is revealing to us. We are in a crucial season, amen, in our transition into that place, into that reality where heaven has ordained for us. And therefore, we'll continue to look into, amen, the mind of the Lord and the heart of God as the spirit of God will direct us. Thank you, my dear sister and commissioner. Thank you for joining this morning. Uh, we're starting a bit late, uh, pardon me for that, but I, I just still sense, or rather, we need to pray this morning. We need to continually, amen, look into the perfect law of liberty. We don't want to be a forgetful hearer of the things that the Spirit of God, amen, is speaking to us. We understand how tight, how difficult, how challenging it is in this season and time to press for that. But we are, we are receiving that grace and that strength and the courage, amen, of one that is called, amen, a breakthrough believer to continue to pursue, to continue to advance. So even when we feel tired and we feel weak, amen, that is when the Bible proclaimed that we should declare strength, amen. The scripture says, let the weak say, I am strong. So there's something about our proclamation, amen, that, that, that brings forth, that reveals, amen, the true position of God's uh, counsel in our heart and the, and the counsels of God, the purposes of God, the dimension of what God is doing in our life, amen, is to grant us strength to continue to live, to continue to advance, amen, amidst the oppositions, amidst, amen, the contradictions, the, amidst the trials, amen. So that is what we believe God to do every day as long as we have breath, as long as we have life we will continue to pray we will continue to 
seek the mind of God, seek the heart of God. Of course, we understand that prayer is beyond just some, you know, religious, you know, declaration. It's beyond just, you know, some ceremonial, you know, and so-called devotional thing that we do. We know that prayer is a place where we interact, amen, with the heart of God himself, amen. In the place of prayer, we get to understand, we get to know, we get to receive, we get to become more like Christ, hallelujah. The more we look into the perfect love, liberty, and we allow Christ, amen, to be manifest in us, the more we reveal him in the earth. So we thank God, amen, that we have his word. The word of God is our reference. The word of God, hallelujah, is our mirror. The word of God is our blueprint. The word of God is what, amen, gives us life. Everything that we see today are created. In, in, in fact, the scripture says the word of God, amen, is the, is the chronicle, amen, of the activities of God. In the beginning, amen, we, we, the Bible said, God said, let there be light. And there was light. And that word was recorded. So we have a reference, amen, to living life, amen. We have a reference to advancing. Thank you, Sister Dione, for joining this morning. Appreciate it. We have a reference, amen, to living life. We have a reference, amen, to growth. We have a reference, amen, to our position in the earth, regardless of the darkness. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Gross darkness, the Bible says, covering the people. But amidst that darkness, the Bible says, arise and shine for your light has come. That's what we, we want to continue to do, amen, to rise up amidst the darkness, to rise up and to speak. Darkness, what Bible says in the beginning, darkness. In fact, let's go to that scripture quickly. Just going to take you. I wanted to share something with you, but let's quickly go to Genesis. Genesis is the, is the book of beginning, is the place where our history begins. Hallelujah. Genesis still holds to us, amen, the secret of our finishing. There's no way we can finish if we don't understand the foundation, all right? Foundation is not just about the beginning. It's about what's, what holds together, what defines our position. Hallelujah. And so we, we, we will continue to stand, amen, and see what the Lord, amen, is doing. I just quickly want to show you this scripture while the Lord lays it in my heart. Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, in the beginning, this is a new day. Today is like a beginning. Today, hallelujah, is the womb of a new day. In the beginning, God created the heavens, amen, and the earth. If you notice that the place of the dwellings of God, amen, was not, was not, was not mentioned here. The Bible says God created the heavens. The place that God dwells, the heaven that God dwells, hallelujah, is not mentioned here because God lives, hallelujah, in eternity. Eternity lives in him. And guess what? That is where we came from. We are, we are being of eternity. Hallelujah. The beginning is the beginning. Hallelujah. Of that which God has ordained us to carry out, to, to manifest, amen, to reveal to creation. The beginning is the beginning point, amen, of that which the, the spirit of the Lord has desired and ordained for us, amen, to showcase, to display, hallelujah, to manifest, hallelujah. But the beginning itself, amen, began in God. Amen. We are from eternity past. Remember, it is God that said, let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness. So there was something about eternity, amen, that, that was infused in man. In fact, that had been in man before the beginning was. Because the Bible says, in the beginning, God made the heavens. If he's the one that made the heavens, the, the maker of the heavens cannot be made while he's making things. So he must, he must be living from a different realm, amen. He's living, amen, in a different dimension of time, hallelujah, that time cannot contain. He lives within a dimension of existence, amen, that has no time, that has no beginning, hallelujah. And that is a pattern that we, are, we saw, amen, in Melchizedek. I was listening to that this morning and I said to myself, Father, help me. Uh, let me not generalize. I said, Lord, help me to understand what you're doing in my day, that you're calling us, amen, back to our position of eternal priesthood. The Bible talk about the order, the priesthood of the order. The order is, is a dimension, is a certain structure, amen. It carries a value standard, amen. The order of Melchizedek, not the order of Aaron, not the order of Moses. The Bible says of Melchizedek, amen, he has no beginning. He has no father or mother. Hallelujah. Today we are buffeted by what our father did to us, by what our mother did to us, by what somebody took from us, by what somebody, you know, uh, did not give to us. We are so limited, amen, to, to the natural realm. Yet the Bible says, amen, we have been saved from the world. The day we give our life to Jesus, we were translated back to that order of, hallelujah, the Melchizedek order that has no time, that has no beginning, amen, a, a dimension of eternity. 
We live in that order of eternity. We came from eternity. We are not bound to time. We, we may be living in time and time may be happening to us. Time may seek to limit us, but we have to begin to, you know, reconscious rec our mind. Hallelujah. That, hey, we are not bound to time. We are not, you see, anything that, that seek to stop your limit is bound to time. The people who, who had walked through time, who lived their life, amen, understood this. That's why Joseph, hallelujah, was able to say to his, his brother, say, you meant it to be evil, but God turned it around for my good. Hallelujah. He said, 70 years, you guys will be amen, in exile. You will be in Babylon. But after 70 years, I will smile on you again. I will smile on you. I will bring you back amen, to your place. We have to understand that prophecy, hallelujah, is within time. That's why the scripture says there's a time, there's a realm that will come to, amen, where we live beyond prophecy. We live beyond prophecy because prophecy is that which, amen, God has ordained in time to be fulfilled in time. Outside, outside time, there is no prophecy. Outside time, there is no prophecy. That's why we must believe God to understand what the Spirit of God is doing in our day. Heaven is locating us back to, amen, our eternity. Heaven is locating us back to, amen, that realm, that place, that point, amen, of, of eternal life, amen, of a timeless life, amen, of a life in Christ. That is what it means to give your life to Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm rediscovering these things again, that when we begin to live our life from that realm, amen, that is timeless. You see, Jesus was born. Christ was not born. Christ came from, amen, the, the reality, the realm, the dimension, amen, where he was, hallelujah, before the beginning began, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we have to understand this. And I think this should give us hope. This should give us a sense of joy. It should give us a sense, you know, sometimes when we look, when we look at what we are going through in life, we think this thing will last for forever. We think they will last for, you know, eternity. But that's, that, that's not true. Every problem ceases when somebody dies, isn't it? <laughs> if you're owing, amen, you're in debt. If you're, if you're in lack, if you're sick, amen. If you're, whatever it is that you're going through in life, amen. When you die, those things ceases. <laughs> they ceases. You can't, you, can, you can't die and still be sick. You can't die and still be owing. You can't die and still be buffeted. No wonder the scripture says we must come to death. We must embrace death. So we can live above our need. We can live above the challenges of life. It's from that point that Jesus Christ operated from. They said there is no food. He said, what do you guys have? They said, well, there's a boy with two fish and three loaves of bread. He said, bring it. <laughs> he prayed from a dimension earlier that he, that he, that he existed from, from, from that realm of eternity. In eternity, there are no lack. In eternity, there is abundance. In eternity, amen. Everything that, that you need, even in eternity, I don't think people eat there. Because the more you behold the face of the Father, you're satisfied, you're fulfilled. You see, we're dealing with the issues of the fall. We're dealing with the issues of our fall. We're dealing with the issues of the first man. We are still manifesting. We are still dealing with the aftermath of the first man. We are still reflecting, amen, the order of, amen, the first man. The, the Bible talk about the second man, the last Adam. Where did he come from? He came from heaven. The second man, the, uh, the last Adam came from heaven. He was not born. No, no, he was not born. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came from eternity. He came from a dimension that is not limited. And I think if we begin to shift our focus, amen, away from the things that just want us to be fixative on needs, on problems, on challenges. Not like those things are not real. They are real. But the more we focus on God, the more we develop the power, the grace, the more we will rise above, amen, that water that's, that's, that, that desire to sink us, that, you know, quicksand. The more we focus on eternity, that's what i'm talking about you see jesus was able to fulfill his purpose on earth because he was ever focused on the father he was ever focused on man yeah, excuse me he was never focused on man he was forever focused on amen the realm of uh, eternal life a realm that in fact what is salvation is eternal life they said this is eternal life that they may know you 
This is eternal life that we may know him. Friends, we are still, we are still struggling, hallelujah, from, you know, from the impact of the, of the first man. We're still struggling from the impact of the fall of the first man. This is why we are, we are not able to, you know, prefer answer and solution to, you know, all the things around us. This is why, you know, we go through things, all right, you know, you know, five years and it's like we want to die. It's like, no, 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 I can't take it again. You know, we have to believe God to give us, hallelujah, a glimpse of eternity. This is not what I intend to, to talk about this morning, but of course you can see the Lord is directing, you know, that's why when we say we want to pray, we, we, we connect with that dimension that is unstoppable, that is on, that, that cannot be limited, that is limitless, hallelujah. We're coming to a day, hallelujah, to, 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 to a time that, that, is, that is limitless. So when we talk about time, we talk about the seasons of God unfolding in our life. That is what time was ordained for, hallelujah. Time was ordained ordained to unfold, to reveal, hallelujah, in sequence, the seasons of God, the plans of God, the intentions of God for our life. We should not, we should not be bound, amen, and feel entrapped and feel, you know, in, in, in prison, amen, to time. All right. Yes. Peter was in prison. You know, you can only be in prison, hallelujah, via time. He was in prison. They sent someone from eternity. <laughs> the one from eternity, amen, has no, has no sense of prison or bound. The Bible says an angel was sent. What did he do? He opened, he opened the door of the prison. The, 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 the chain fell off his, off his hand. Peter walked out. Peter still thought he was dreaming. Yes, because at that moment in time, he was operating from a reality, amen, that is eternal. When we walk, when we begin to walk from that dimension of our eternal life, listen to this, we will walk on water. Chains will fall off our hands. No matter how you've been struggling with that issue, amen, suddenly they become a thing of the past. Jesus lived, and he, and he came to show us that that is what the kingdom of God is all about. They said, they said, you know, your friend Lazarus has been dead. He's four days now. He said, come, let's, let's go visit him. Let's go, let's go pay him a visit. Hallelujah. In eternity, hallelujah, there's nothing like death. And eternity is not a realm. It's not a place that we're going. It's, it's a gift that has been given to us via our salvation. It's something we should be experiencing. It's something we should be, hallelujah, we should be using as a benefit, hallelujah, for, 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 for the advancement of the counsels and the purposes of God for our life. I pray this morning that we will receive the mind of Christ. That's why the scripture says that we need to be renewed. Hallelujah. These are processes that will help us, amen, to walk in the newness. Of light that God has given to us. In the beginning, God created the heavens, plural, and the earth, singular. Now the earth, hallelujah, was formless and empty. Now the earth was formless and empty. The same, the same earth that God created was formless and empty. Something certainly happened. And something is maybe happening to what God had created. Something may be happening. Amen. Because you see, when God created the earth, the earth began to live under the order of what? Of time. And the devil knows that for him to be able to, you know, to, 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 to you know, to create mayhem, hallelujah, he, he, he had to come into time. And he came into time and disorder things. You know how he disordered things? Yes. He spoke to Adam and Eve. He spoke to Adam. Did God actually say? Come on, friends. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over. Every time we feel a sense of formless, we, we feel a sense of emptiness, hopelessness. We understand that that's a manifestation, amen, of the fruits, amen. Of the, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That, that's a manifestation, amen, of the fruit of one who has abdicated his position in eternity. And that's what the devil did. He, he, just, he, just, he just convinced Adam, amen, to, to shift out of eternity into time. And when we do that, we feel formless, we feel empty. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. But the Spirit of God, have you noticed that after all of that happened, the Spirit of God did not leave. The Bible says the Spirit of God. Why? Because the Spirit of God is the only agent. The Spirit of God is the only agent that brings renewal, that brings reformation. Right now, I want to say to you, where you, wherever you are, the Spirit of God is there with you. The Bible says in the midst of that formlessness, in the midst of that emptiness, in the midst of that, you know, confusion, in the midst of that perversion, in the midst of that, you know, you don't know what's going on. The Bible says the Spirit of God was overing. The Spirit of God continued to maintain his position. Hallelujah. 
Isn't that faithfulness? Isn't that a manifestation of faithfulness? You know, when you find yourself in a state, in a, in a condition where you don't know what to do, please remember the Holy Spirit is there with you. Remember, because there's no way you can get to God without the Spirit. He is, he is the bridge. He is in charge. He is the one in control. Please remember that no matter how dark your night is, the Spirit of God is there with you. Because everything that God created, hallelujah, He lived His Spirit with that creation. I've told you this. This is why a lot of people sometimes, you know, they will, they will worship the moon. They will worship, you know, you know, the stone. They will worship the water. Because there's a sense of the Spirit of God in everything that God creates. Don't you know that? Come on. They will tell you it's the ancestors. No, it's the Spirit of God there. Since the creation, the Spirit of God has, never, has not left. Since creation, the Spirit of God has not left. So, so if you focus on some things that God creates, you, will, you may just find power there. But that doesn't mean that that power, hallelujah, is, 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 is allowed from God. That's why Jesus Christ came to show us that he is the way. Why, when he said, I am the way, the truth and the life, he's saying that there is no other way, hallelujah, to God. That thing that you think has power, yes, it may have power, but it's the illegal way to God, hallelujah. That's why people who are into Sangoma, yes, you, you think they don't have power. They've got power. People who are into the Abalis, who are into all kinds of things. There is a power in, in those things, but those powers have been what? Have been perverted. Those are the wrong way to approach the things of God. You as a human being, you have power. You carry power. Adam still survived. He still lived hundreds of years before he died. And things were happening in the earth, but no longer in the way that God ordained it. You see, that's why a lot of people say, but well, there's no God. After all, we, we know we spoke to the tree and something happened. We know we, we went to that water and something happened there. Uh, you know, we went to that mountain, something happened there. <laughs> they don't understand that, you know, everything that God created earlier carries a residue of his presence, of his power, of his spirit. What makes it, you know, you know approve of God Amen. Is when we when we go through via Christ. Adam was supposed to be the reflection of the order of God in the earth. He lost it. So all the things that Adam created that carried the life of God. Remember, it was it was God who said to Adam, "Whatever you name the things, so they will be." Those things still carry a dimension, hallelujah, of the power of God. There are places you go on earth, you will feel certain power. There are places that people they will ask. There's something in this place. There's, there's, the devil has no power to do anything. It is, the, it is that residue of the life, of the presence of God there. And that's why creation is groaning, friends. That's why creation is groaning to be delivered from the bondage that it's been locked into. May we understand what the Spirit of God is calling us into in this brand new day. We're still struggling. We're still fixative on our own problem. It's time to rise above. And see why God is preparing us to deliver, to save creation. To set the world free from bondage. Now the earth was, <clears throat> excuse me, was formless and empty. Darkness, darkness. Darkness is a manifestation of evil. <clears throat> darkness was, amen. The Bible said darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness. Darkness. Darkness is manifesting in all, on all, in all area, in all, you know, in all, in all ramifications, you know, all kinds of realities today that are manifestations of darkness. Darkness in government. When you find people who are clueless about the things of God, trying to lead others, no wonder there's there is there is there is mayhem, there is confusion all over the place. I'm looking at what's going on in South Africa. I mean, we've been having when you talk about. Power failure is like no man business. People will say, no, no, we've got the people that can fix it. Now we've finally got somebody who can fix this ESCOM problem. I mean, it's amazing the way they take light these days. In a day, the light can go for three, four, four times. 
And these are people who say, well, we know what to do. You see, when darkness covers, when darkness rules their mind, amen, even in their so-called the best of you know, wisdom and, and, and sense of skill, they, they will still bring forth wind. God is speaking to us. That's why I keep saying to you, don't focus your attention on man. Even when people promise you, never depend on man. Let, amen, your eyes be on God. He is a way maker. He is the one, amen, who will direct. He is the one who leads. He is the one who knows, hallelujah, the answer and the solution to the most complex issues of life. May God begin to help us to rise above, amen, our, our trust in, in, in human strength. May God help us to break away, amen, from focusing on mundane things. Ah, oh, well, he's an expert. You know, these are expertise. They, they know what to do. What are they doing? That's just one issue. That's just one aspect. Marriages are collapsing here and there. Children are losing their mind. In America, children are committing suicide like no man's business. All kinds of things are happening. Why? Because darkness. You see, when darkness is in charge, we can't see. We can't, we can't have a sense of direction. We don't know what to do. But yet the Bible says the spirit of the Lord. And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. You know, as long as we have the sense of God's water, what is life? God has something to work with. The waters are not meant to drown us. We, in fact, we were born out of the water. We were born from God's word. The earth came out of water. When God created, he brought it forth. He brought forth the earth out of the waters. What's the level of God's word in your life? Because that's where the perspective comes from. To, 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 to be able to see and to be able to say. To be able to proclaim and to be able to declare. When I say we want to pray, amen, I mean we have to go into the word of God and see what God has said and see the pattern, amen, of how we ought to pray, of what we must declare and proclaim, hallelujah. The Bible says the spirit of God was upon the face of the deep. It was over him. You know, it's like taking charge. It's like scanning the earth, hallelujah. It's like saying I'm still in control. I'm still in charge. No matter how shattered, broken, dysfunctional things may look, amen, the spirit of God was over him, waiting for the next release of God's word. Verse 3, and God said, are you getting the pattern? And God said, the spirit was over him in the midst of darkness, in the midst of emptiness, in the midst, hallelujah, of formlessness. God said, let there be light. I want to proclaim light into your space this morning. I want to proclaim light into my space, into my household, into my life, into the life of my, my family. I want to proclaim light into your, into your home this morning. Wherever darkness is locking, wherever darkness is operating from, I want to declare in the name of Jesus Christ this morning the clarity. You see, there cannot be, there cannot be reformation, there cannot be transformation, there cannot be restoration until the light of God begins to beam. And you and I must open up and say, God, shine your light. Amen. God's light is the agent, amen, of transformation. God's light, amen, is the agent of reformation. God's light is the agent, amen, of restitution. God's light, amen, is the agent, amen, of renewal. God's light is the beginning point of our journey, hallelujah, into the place of fulfillment. And God said, let there be light. He didn't say any other thing. Phys you know, people who are into the world of physics, they will tell you, hallelujah, that light is the agent of creation. Light is the agent of creation. Even as, as, as backwards as some of them are, they, some, those who know the truth, they will tell you that it takes light, amen, to create. And this light means so many things. This word light means... In fact, we cannot begin to comprehend what, what, what this, when God said, let there be light. Galaxies were formed. Galaxies were reordered. Things begin to align. 
Because that light himself is Christ. Friends, let me say to you again, no matter how dark the condition, the situation may be, the Spirit of God is there. If the Spirit of God is there, you can be rest assured the Word of God is coming. And the declaration of God's Word over that situation, hallelujah, will begin to cause creation to realign, will begin to cause things to, amen, to reposition themselves in the divine order that heaven has ordained it. Heaven is doing a new thing in your life this morning. The light of God is, re is recreating you amidst the darkness. I said the light of God is recreating the situation. The light of God is transforming. The light of God is reforming. The light of God, you see, is, is rebuilding. The light of God, hallelujah, is healing. The light of God is restoring. The light of God, hallelujah, is transforming. The light of God, amen, is bringing clarity and direction. The light of God is coming into your space. You're not going to die in that darkness. No, God is bringing his light. Amen. You know. All right, I just wanted to show you something. You know, with the dark, you know, the the the, 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 the light that has been, you know, uh, the, you know, the SCOM issue, you know, they, they take light all the time. So I went to get myself a torch. And I went to get this torch. <laughs> And I saw how powerful this touch is, this touch light. You can adjust it, it can go very far. It can, you know, shine on things that are close, but it can also go very far. And, I be, and God began to speak to me through this touch. You know, some of us, we find ourselves in darkness. And we're confused. We don't know what, you know, you know how darkness, when you're in darkness, you're limited. If you're in a dark room, you don't know what to do. You are limited. You feel, in fact, some people feel like they're going to die. Some people can't take darkness. They can't, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about literal darkness. And it's like God said to me, you see, you, okay, you dealing with the issue of ESCOM, you went to get, isn't the same principle you're supposed to be applying to, you know, to, to issues of life? You, all you need to do is go get yourself a light. Now you don't perspective. Light brings direction. Hallelujah. What light does, amen, is to bring, hallelujah, truth into situation. What light does is to bring solution, is to bring answer. Hallelujah. When there is light, you begin to have clarity, understanding. Where there is light, you begin to have, you know, insight. Where there is light, amen, you begin to have, you know, grace. Where, you see, where there is no light, there is confusion, amen, there is perplexity, amen, there is, there is doubt, there is fear, you know, that is, you know, you know, a hatred, what pride, whatever it is, amen. But once the light of God begins to shine in an area, hallelujah, suddenly you begin to see things. Suddenly you begin to have discernment. Suddenly you begin to have clarity. Suddenly you know what to do. Have you noticed that God did not speak until the light, amen, until the light of God, hallelujah. In fact, God did not create until the light came. And God said, let there be light. And God saw that the light was good. Hallelujah. And God said, let there be light. Amen. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. Friends, God's light is good. The, the world today wants to tell us, amen, the light is not good. The world, the world wants us to live, amen, in darkness. Darkness is, 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 is secretive, hallelujah. Darkness is what is hidden. Darkness is what, amen, keeps people back. It keeps people down. Keeps people in sickness, in disease, in infirmity. When people, amen, are, are bound by sickness, disease, infirmity, that is a manifestation of darkness. Whatever it is, this morning, I want to proclaim and declare, let the light of God begin to shine. You see, when the light come into that area, suddenly discernment comes. He said, well, oh, wow, now I know what to do. That's the light of God brings illumination. The light of God. He says, your word is a light unto my feet. Hallelujah. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Hallelujah. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I speak in the name of Jesus into your space this morning. May God's word bring illumination. May God's word bring direction to you. That when you open the word of God, that you will not just read a letter that kills, but you begin to read answer. You begin to read solution. Grace of God. Receive 
receive the wisdom of God, receive the directions of the Spirit, receive the ability this morning to rise and begin to prefer the right solution into that situation. In the name of Jesus, darkness would not succumb cover you. Darkness will not destroy you. In the name of Jesus, I speak light into your mind. I speak light amen, into your thought. I speak light amen, into your, your faculty. I speak light amen, into your soul. I speak light amen, into your spirit man. I speak light into every dimension of your existence. I say rise up in the light of God. I proclaim this day that you are sons of light. Hallelujah. You are sons of light. You are sons of light. You are sons of light. Produce light into your space. Let the life of God begin to produce. Let the life of God begin to produce light. When God said, that word that God said is the release of life. Hallelujah. In him was life and the life became the light. Hallelujah. And the life became the light. And the life became the light. And the life became the light. It is the life of God that is translated. Hallelujah. Into light. When God releases his word, is releasing his life. And when the life of God is released, that life is translated. You cannot have the life of God, hallelujah, and be captured by darkness. You cannot have eternal life living in you and be bound, amen, to temporary sickness and disease. You cannot have the life of God in you and be captured, hallelujah, by ungodliness, by perversion, by wickedness. I declare in the name of Jesus right now, you are receiving the life of God. As you receive the life, the life is translated to light and the light becomes the answer and the solution, hallelujah, to that issue, to that problem. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, receive the ministry of life as you receive the ministry of light. It all comes where God said. God said, I don't just want to speak. I want you to do as I do. I want you to stand and speak my life. I want you to stand and speak my life into that situation. What is that, what is that darkness over your, over your space, over your calling, over your ministry? What is that darkness that the enemy, hallelujah, is twatting, is, is, is releasing, is, 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 you know, is mocking you with? In the name of Jesus, begin to speak the life, begin to proclaim and declare. You were created, hallelujah, amen, as a carrier of the life of God. The life of God is in me. I remember when I was down sick, I used to say to myself, amen, I have the life of God in me. How can Christ be in me? And then I'm still bound. I'm still, I'm still yoked by this sickness, by this disease. And I used to speak the life. I, ha I have life in my mind. I have life in my thought. I have life. Amen. I used to speak that as I speak that suddenly I begin to feel a change. You know, you need to start speaking the things that you know of God's word. And that life, amen, is translated into light. And as, as light begins to shine, darkness cannot stay. Have you noticed that what the enemy hates the most is light? He hates. I mean, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, because they love darkness, because they love darkness, amen, they are bound by the powers of hell. The children of this world love darkness. No, we don't love darkness. We are not the children of this world. We are children of God. Hallelujah. And because we are children of God, we have the ministry of light. Of the ministry of light. Light into your space. Light into your home, light into the mind amen, is to make sure that your two headlamps, amen, are working. You check, amen, all your all your side, you know, are lights, but you you want to be sure, amen, that your headlamp, amen, because you can only you can only go as far, amen, as as you know, as your headlamp, amen. If your headlamps, amen, are not good, you don't you don't you don't want to travel except you want to die. You know that is suicide. If you if you if you're traveling, you know there's something wrong with your light. <laughs> you don't want to travel if something's wrong with your light. This is the pattern heaven showed us to our various workplace as we engage, amen, our various business of the day. I declare you will manifest life. When you read, amen, about Daniel in Babylon, it was a manifestation of light. When you read, hallelujah, about, amen, about Joseph in Egypt, all those, all those things that Joseph did, amen, the dreams, the ability to interpret dreams is because he was a carrier of the light of God, of the life of God, amen, in the name of Jesus. When you read, amen, about Ruth, Deborah, about Abigail, amen, uh, when you read about, amen, all these things that, you know, Paul did is because he was a carrier. No wonder Paul will pray, amen, for the, you know, for the church of Ephesus that they be flooded with light 
to be flooded with light. I pray this morning that you'll be saturated, amen, with the life of God because that life of God that you carry is translated into light. I pray this morning that you are flooded with light, amen. When light comes into you, depression goes. When light comes into your situation, amen, you know, you know, distractions go, amen, dysfunctionality go, insecurity goes, amen, lack, poverty, sickness, disease, infirmity, confusion, they become a thing of the past. May the light of God right now begin to shine into your path. May your, may your path this day be illuminated. Hallelujah. May your highway, may your byway be illuminated with the light. Christ has become to you light. In the name of Jesus, you will not die in confusion. You will not die in fear. You will not die in sickness. You will not die in disease. You will not die in death. You will not die. You will not die in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> you live in the name of Jesus. Life gives light. And light, hallelujah, transforms. The world is waiting for us, friends. Let's be carrier of the life of God, the light of God, and transform our world. It's time, friends. Let God continue to, you know, walk a walk in your life. Every area of darkness, I prophesy the light of God into those areas. Those dark areas of your mind, your thoughts, amen. Let the light of God begin to shine there in the name of Jesus. Whatever area of your life, amen, that you're struggling with, you need a light. The entrance, the entrance of God's word gives light. Have you read that before in the scripture? The entrance of the word brings light. Let there be an entrance of God's light into that space, into that arena, into that condition, <clears throat> excuse me, into that condition. <clears throat> excuse me. We spoke about, amen, the 120 in the upper room. They were carriers of light and they transformed their world. They have no money. They had no, you know, educational, you know, uh, 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 you know, pedigree, whatever it is that we, we, we run in to get today. You know, one of our sister posted, you know, uh, uh, a word yesterday and I had to, I had to copy it because I didn't see, you know, a, uh, uh, you know, a share link. So I had to literally copy the link and post it on my timeline. The people, the guys who change the world, that's my philosophy. The guys who change their world, the 120 who change, who change their world, they had no money. They had no political affiliation. You know, all those things that we are looking for today, they're all excuses. When I was coming to this nation, like I always say to you, I knew no one. I had no, I had no connection except for one brother that I met, you know, when he came with another apostle to Nigeria, there was no connection, but I knew God had sent me. All I needed was to be sure of that. If you're sure that God has called you, hallelujah, into that space, into that arena, you will shine the light of God there. You don't need no connection. God will connect you to the right people. If you need the resource, he will be the one supplying. No wonder Paul said, for my God shall supply all my needs. Remember, I always say, listen to this. I always say, God always take care of his own interests in our life. God invests in his interests in our life. If you're doing something that is to promote the advancement of the kingdom of God, you are not going to lack in that area. If, if God, amen, will need to send a raven to come and feed you, they will send a raven. <laughs> Hallelujah. They will send a raven. They will connect you to the brook. And if the brook dry up, they will send it to Zarephath. Everything in the natural may be looking like it's not possible. I can't receive a provision here. Amen. When God said stay here in Franjuk, hallelujah, God made provision for me. He will use all kinds of means and ways, amen. He will speak to somebody, God knows where. They will they will connect with you because they know that you are carrying something, hallelujah, that represents the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean that sometimes you will not feel like you're alone. It doesn't mean that sometimes you will not feel like, oh God, oh, am I going to die here? No. When God sends you, hallelujah, his provision is there because his light, hallelujah, amen, will, will bring clarity. The, the light of God will direct people to your path. Out of, out of a million, they will single-handed you out, hallelujah. The light of God, amen, will single, will single you out. Those guys, were, they were just carrier of the fire. A fire is a reflection of light. Don't, don't fire illuminate. When there's fire burning, you see everything bright. Hallelujah. <laughs> they were carrier of the, of the fire. The clothing tongue of fire was upon their head. Everyone was carrying his own light. Amen. He's uh, carrying their own light. Don't be like the foolish virgins who go to sleep 
because there is corona. You go to sleep, all right, because there is God knows what out there. Don't go to sleep. Awake, awake, oh daughter of Zion. Put on strength. Strength comes because light has come. In the name of Jesus. I proclaim upon your life this day. You will rise into life. You will rise above limitation. You will rise above, amen, the opinions of men. You will rise above even the, your own opinion in the name of Jesus. You are fulfilling God's prophetic intention for your life. You are fulfilling God's desire for your life in the name of Jesus. You are where God wants you to be. Listen to the voice of God. Guess what? Revelation is light. When, whenever you have revelation, it brings illumination. If you say it's a revelation, it should illuminate. It should bring clarity. That's why it's called revelation. It's revealed. If something is revealed, it means a light had been shone there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we thank you. Never be afraid. If God sent you to China, go there as a bearer of light. If God is sending you to Kuwait, go there as a bearer of light. In light that is wisdom. Because light, hallelujah, is a nature of your father. Is the nature of the one that is called the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I feel bold this morning. I feel bold. I feel strong this morning. Come on, friends. I feel alive because I've got the word of God in me. When you have the word of God, you are never disenfranchised. You see, it's the attitude. Hallelujah. We, we, we approach the word of God that defines how far we go with God. It's time to begin to see that the most important thing that has ever happened to you is that you have God's word in your life. The entrance of God's word brings light to the simple. That's the other part of the scripture. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't add. The entrance of God's light, hallelujah, yes, brings illumination. The entrance of God's word brings light to the simple. Simple means prudent. You're open, you're willing, you're like a child. You want to learn. May that be your portion, my sister, this morning. May that be your portion, my brother, this morning. May this new day, this new church, heaven is birthed in this glorious day. May it be a church of the carrier of the life. You know, when you carry the life of God, you don't need to be running around trying to introduce yourself. Wherever light goes, light illuminates. Light commands people to look. When you see light, you are attracted to it. You don't need to speak much. <laughs> we perceive that they were learned people that they've been with light they've been with Jesus that's the key come on friends stop running around it's time to lock yourself in and say God I need your light I you remember it takes the oil for the light eh, to shine yes remember they went to sleep as they sleep their lamp burned out because they ran out of oil when the trumpet came and sounded they said well the bridegroom is here as they adjust their you know their wick they realized, come on, no, 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 no. We ran out of white. Guys, can you give? They said, no, sorry. You have to go buy your own. Friends, this is the time to invest in what will keep your lamp burning. This is the time. This is the moment. Spend time with the Lord. Spend time. Spend time. The time you spent with God, with his word, is never a wasted time. It's always, amen, an addition to your life. Every time you spend with God, you spend with his word, you spend in his presence, amen, is an addition, is, 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 is an investment, amen, to your future, to the future of your family, your children. It's an, it's an investment to the future of that ministry, that business, that career, whatever it is God has committed into your hand. Spend time, spend time in prayer. You know, we wrote a book some time ago, you know, Price for His Presence. You need to go look for that book. There's so much you can do when you spend time amen, in the presence of God. Thank you so much, uh, 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 man of God, uh, uh, Apostle Kazim, this morning. Thank you for joining. I, re I really appreciate it. When you spend time, when you spend time, when you spend time in God's presence, it is never a waste. It's, it's an investment to your future. All the things that I know today earlier were acquired because I spent time. Time is given to you to get to know eternity. 
We are rediscovering eternity. Time is not given to you to be running around, you know, like a headless chicken. You're running from one pillar to post, you know, you know, looking for somebody to help you. Your help is not in any man's hand. Your help is not in any man's hand. If a man help you, it's because heaven has spoken. Heaven whispered to such a man. If a woman help you, it's because heaven whispered to that woman. Earlier. Nobody has the power to do good. They say, they say, Jesus, you, you're so good. Jesus said, who, who is good? There's no one good. Good comes from heaven. Good master. He said, no, don't, don't try to psych me up. <laughs> good, goodness comes from him. Don't you understand that goodness is a reflection, amen, of the fruit of the spirit? All the people that God have used to be a blessing to me is because God touched their hearts. The day God speaks otherwise, they will turn their back. They will turn their back because nobody has the power of his own ability to do good. No, 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 no. You've got to understand you know, the, the goodness that comes from God and those who are into the ministry of uh, philanthropists who are trying to, you know, they're, they're trying to help society you know, to cover up certain things in their life. All right. They're the most damaged people. You think, see what that people have done. See what that company have done. See what, no, no, no. They're not doing those things because they have God in their heart. They're doing those good things, those so-called good things, because they're trying to cover a hole. No matter how, no matter, no matter the goodness they do, they will still feel empty. That's why they still, they still go home. They feel tired. They feel battered. They, they commit suicide at the end of the day. Yes. Nobody has the power to do anything good except the spirit of God. I whisper to them. So stop running around. Stop listening. Amen. Uh, uh, you know, to that motivate. Uh, uh, this guy can motivate me. No. Spend time in God's word and pray. Bible says while Peter was praying. Amen. <laughs> people came. They said, go to the house of Colinius. Because, amen, he was a reflection of goodness. God. I'm rediscovering this God, this, this man, this, this heavenly father. I'm rediscovering him, friends. Maybe you have lost a sense of who he is. It's time to stop. Bring yourself back and say, Lord, I need to reconnect with you. Help me. I've lost a sense of direction. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. He wasn't running around. He wasn't trying to, you know, do something. The Bible says, and the spirit was upon the face of the deep. And he said, let there be light. That's all he did. But you see, it wasn't just speaking. He spoke because, amen, the Spirit of God was already in control. The Spirit of God was in charge. Like I told you, friends, you might have lost everything, but you've not lost the Holy Spirit. You can start with Him. It's your best business partner. Come on. It's your best business partner. It's your best friend. Hallelujah. It's your best teacher. Come on. It's your best professor. You can start with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, and the Spirit was hovering upon Alea, the empty, empty world uh, and the darkness that is upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit said, Friends, this is the word I bring to you this morning. There's hope for us because we are people of faith. Because we are people of faith, there is hope for us and we'll continue to pursue Hallelujah. The love of God. Our heart will continue to seek him passionately. We will continue to chase after him. Our world may be collapsing, but we are not going to stop pursuing. We are not going to stop proclaiming and declaring. We are not going to stop dancing before him. We are not going to stop praising him. We are not going to stop giving him thanks. And I'm talking about something that we do that the world can see it. Because we've done it secretly. We are not afraid to proclaim he's our God, he's our King, he's our Lord. Is our law giver. Those who continue to look into the perfect law of liberty. And so continue doing. Not forgetting what they have seen. These ones will manifest the image of, of his son in the earth. Friends. Father we honor your name. We thank you O God. That when the enemy thinks he has beaten us down. We rise again. Thank you Lord. For a day of resurrection. Darkness was upon the face of the deep and God said, let there be light because the spirit was already over it. There are things the spirit of God is overing right now over. All you need to do is to just, you know, reflect the same thing that God did. Just speak the word. Just speak the word because the spirit of God is overing over that business. It's overing over that ministry. 
The Spirit of God is hovering over that career. It's hovering over that job. It's hovering over that man, over that woman. It's hovering over that situation. Whatever it is, you just need to do what? The Spirit of God is waiting for the release of the word. You see, God, the Holy Spirit never moves until there's a release of the word. And God said. He would think, okay, the Spirit of God is moving, so let's just allow the Spirit to do His thing. No, there has to be a corresponding amen, manifestation of the Word of God. The Word of God, hallelujah, has amen, to be released for the Spirit of God to go into action. You have to let that you have to learn to open your mouth you have to learn to speak life you have to learn to release what the word of god says over that situation over that condition over that circumstance over that problem over that you know you know circumstance whatever it is you have to learn to open your mouth amen because as he is so we are god wants you to reflect his nature in the earth so that the world can see the testimony they say wait wait a minute this thing works yes it, it does work when you speak the word of God earlier because you are full of God's life. The light of God will flow through you and something will begin to happen in the human realm. That's the testimony the Lord is waiting for. You know, God could have just waved his hand and things will still happen. God would have just blinked his eyes and things will still happen. But he spoke. He spoke. That's why God gave you a mouth. Don't speak doubt. Don't use your mouth to curse. Don't use your mouth, amen, to speak, you know, weakness, to speak, you know, fear and speak doubt and speak all kinds of, no, speak life, speak truth, hallelujah, speak grace, amen, speak hope, speak power, speak deliverance, speak. I have seen demons literally jump out of people because, amen, I spoke God's word in the name of Jesus. Not like this, what they call, you know, uh, ministry, deliverance ministry you see today. That people do all kinds of crazy things. They will go to all kinds of places to get power. They, they wear all kinds of rings. They will do all kinds of crazy things. I mean, I, I'm surprised. Hello, my dear sister, uh, Sister Ruth. Thank you so much. I mean, this lady knows me. We went to the same Bible school together. You remember how we used to pray back in those days, Sister Ruth? I, I've seen demons. I mean, we, we where we went to Bible school, we talk about real life demons. You will see them, witches that walk in the noonday. They don't they don't hide it. You see, you see that woman, she's a witch. Confessed witch, but powerful people. <laughs> you speak life in the name of Jesus. Come out. P -p -p witches that will tell you tomorrow you're dead. If you don't have God in you, <laughs> you better be afraid. I've seen things, friends. All because I walk in the reality that I'm a carrier of life. Whenever the devil wants to destroy you, he shifts your focus from what you carry, from who you, from who you are, what you represent. As you go to work today, I want you to know that the Spirit of God is in you. Start from there. Holy Spirit, I want to be your best friend again. I want to know you. I think I've left you behind. But, but I heard the word this morning that you're still over and over the darkness. He's still over and over the darkness. And I, I was told this morning that if, if I can speak the word that you will go into action. Of course, the word that you speak must be the word that is aligned from the presence of God. Not your own, not your own words, not your own idea, not your own opinion. You can't speak your own opinion. You can't speak your own, you know, no, no, no. You have to speak the word that comes from the bowels of the heart of the Father. You have to speak the word, amen, that comes from the innermost of Christ. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Is that not what we just read in Genesis earlier? The water covers the earth. Creation was brought forth out of the waters. Out of your belly, rivers. It's from that water that you speak forth. You are not disenfranchised. None of us is disenfranchised. We just need to pay more attention amen, to the building up, to the development, to the equipping of our innermost being. Building up yourself on your most holy faith building up yourself yourself is the spiritual condition of your identity building up yourself you have to excuse me
You have to build yourself. Building up yourself on your most holy faith. Praying in the spirit. When you start praying in the spirit, things start happening into your into your space. My God, let it flow out of you. He said, I've never heard this one before. Why should you be hearing the ones <laughs> praying what you've heard before? Let a new tongue be given to you because the deep is calling to the deep as the noise of many waters. Bring it out. Speak to the four corners of your world. Speak to the four corners of the earth. Speak to amen, every situation and condition around you and see God move on your behalf. You don't command him. You agree with him. You align with him. Hallelujah. You will agree with what amen, has been established in eternity. Father, we thank you this day. Thank you, Father, for the move of your spirit. Thank you, Father, this day. We release, oh God, the unction this morning to go out there and shine forth and reveal life in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for every man, every woman, every servant of yours that have joined us this morning. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in their space, oh God. Thank you, Father, for the move of your glory, of your spirit. Thank you that they are carriers of your presence, oh God, to wherever, Lord, this morning you have called them to govern. Thank you, Father, Father, for your life this morning that is shining over their space in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your will. Thank you, Father, for your intentions. Thank you, Father, for advancement. Light, as we have read this morning, as we have learned this morning, light is what gives us mobility. It gives us the capacity to advance, to go forward. And so, Father, we declare your lamp, oh God, your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. For the path of the righteous, yes, Lord, uh, is like the beginning, is like that twilight, oh God, that breaks forth in the new day. It's like that twinkle of a light that we see oh god yes oh god and as we journey further oh god in the name of jesus we come into what is called the full light the full sun in the name of jesus thank you spirit of god that our path this day is being lifted up with your light huh? because we are carriers of your life we bless your name this morning that we are unstoppable we bless your name this morning that we are unstoppable your glory your grace oh god is what we are carrying into the next dimension into the next frontier of your intentions for our life Life. we proclaim this morning as we journey we journey into victory we journey into provision we journey into victory we journey into provision provision of 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 of, of our state of mind provision in our spiritual psyche provision oh god in our faculty provision oh god to rise up to become provision to represent in the name of jesus we thank you that we are becoming indeed that new wine skin uh, that you are pouring into we thank you we bless your name uh, that no weapon of the enemy from the fashion against us will prosper your will father this day is being accomplished in our life and through our life i bless you oh god for everyone and those that will be watching or listening to this broadcast we pray in jesus name that they will have breakthrough they will have deliverance uh, they will move further in the name of jesus nothing will stop oh god nothing will hinder nothing will frustrate uh, your intention for their life for their home for their family for their ministry for their career for their business in the name of Jesus, I decree lighter in the name of Jesus into your path. I say, Go forth this morning, shine forth in the name of Jesus, break through in the name of Jesus. The mind of Christ is what you receive right now. The mind of Christ leads you into the dimension of the operations of the eternal life. This is life eternal that they may know you, begin to know the Lord, and therefore begin to express the glory of eternity in the name of Jesus. You are not limited. Because the grace, the spirit that created you was not limited. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. It is well with your life. It is well with your household. It is well with your ministry. In the name of Jesus, as you drive to walk, I proclaim in Jesus' name, the grace of God, yes, to continue to steer your spirit. You will become creative. In the name of Jesus, you are productive. In the name of Jesus, in your workplace, Karabayando, like Joseph, like Joseph, you are elevated, you are promoted because of the creativity, because of the spirit of creativity. In the name of Jesus, as Daniel ruled in Babylon, you will rule in Jesus' name. I pray proclaim it i decree it in jesus name it is well with you father we thank you we honor you in jesus name thank you so much everyone this morning for joining us well 
we done it again i thought i was just going to spend a few minutes just to pray with us but we bless god amen for this wonderful time that we've been able to share in god's presence thank you my dear sister sister ruth nice to have you again joined this morning i hope you're doing well with the family god bless you god bless you thank you sister tina god bless you so much amen thank you thank you once again our, our man of god apostle kasim thank you for joining this morning stan kumisa bless you thank you really appreciate uh uh you're joining this morning who else is there yara sister katrine thank you so much god bless you my dear sister god bless you god bless you i pray grace i pray god amen to open doors and and, and bring you into the full realities of his intention for your life for this season in the name of jesus god bless you my dear sister god bless you sister Dione. god thank you so much god bless you too amen and everyone out there and those of us that will be watching that will be listening all right maybe to the uh, uh, to the audio broadcast i noticed that a lot of people like to listen to our audio broadcast we pray in the name of jesus that god will come Continue to use this audio broadcast to open doors for us to help us to walk in alignment amen even in that which the spirit of god is doing in this glorious day god bless you everyone have yourself a fruitful day god bless you bye bye